Have you heard about plus minus ratings? Perhaps you have heard about different types of plus minus ratings. In the next few minutes, I will tell you what you need to know about these mysterious ratings in the context of evaluating football players. So let's get started. Welcome to Football Player Ratings. My name is Lars Magnus, and in several videos on this channel, I have presented chunks of information about how to develop plus minus ratings for football players. In this video, I will provide a general introduction to plus minus ratings, starting from the very basics and ending with the latest tricks that we have incorporated into our current rating model. I will also try to give an honest evaluation of how good I think the resulting ratings are, so hang in there to the very end. Let's start by considering the purpose of plus-minus ratings. In team sports, it may be difficult to evaluate the contribution of each individual player towards the achievements of the team as a whole. This is particularly true in fluid invasion sports such as football. Some simple statistics can be used to compare players, such as the number of goals scored, the number of assists, the number of successful passes, dribbles, tackles, and so on. However, these statistics only capture a small part of the total contribution of a player. Are there ways to capture a more complete picture of a player's contributions? Metrics trying to accomplish this can typically be categorized either as top-down metrics or bottom-up metrics. The bottom-up paradigm is based on calculating the value of each action taken by every player, and then calculating a rating for a player based on the total value of all actions taken by that player. This involves estimating the value of, say, performing a successful tackle just outside the box in terms of its contribution towards scoring the next goal. The top-down paradigm is based on looking at the performance of the team as a whole and then distributing the credit for that performance on the individual players involved. Plus-minus ratings are examples of using the top-down paradigm. The basic plus-minus statistic was first calculated in the 1950s by the Montreal Canadiens. It measures a player's goal differential, that is, the difference between the goals scored and the goals conceded when the player is in the game. The NHL officially started compiling plus-minus ratings in 1967. Around 2003, plus-minus ratings were introduced also in basketball and the NBA. In recent years, several versions of plus-minus ratings have been presented for football, but only in unofficial channels. When presenting the basic plus-minus statistic, one is usually doing the calculations for one season at a time. For example, if we do this for the 2016-2017 season of the English Premier League, these are the 10 players with the highest plus-minus ratings. Take Thibaut Courtois to illustrate the ratings. He played 36 full matches for Chelsea in the 2016-2017 season. Over those matches, Chelsea scored 81 goals and conceded 28. 81 minus 28 is 53 which is then the plus-minus rating for Courtois. This way of doing the calculations may be a bit unfair though, as some players have simply appeared in fewer matches and therefore have had fewer chances to increase their goal differential. One possible solution to this would be to calculate for each player their goal differential per 90 minutes of playing time. Using again the 2016-2017 season of the English Premier League, this is the list of the 10 players with the highest plus-minus per 90 minutes ratings. Calculating the ratings per 90 minutes has some strange effects. Consider Philip Lesniak. He only appeared in one match of the Premier League in this season. He came on for Moussa Dembele in the 86th minute, got an assist in the 89th minute with Harry Kane scoring, and then saw Kane putting one more into the net before the final whistle. This resulted in Lesniak getting a goal differential of plus two. With only seven minutes played, this amounts to a tad more than plus 25 goals per 90 minutes. Clearly, this is not a good way of ranking players if some of the players only have a few minutes of playing time. Removing players with only few appearances helps a bit, but there is still something unfair about this metric. It favors players on good teams. That is, if you play on a bad team, it doesn't really help if you are a very good player. Your team is still likely to get a negative goal differential. To deal with this, we need different forms of plus-minus ratings. One solution, directly addressing the issue, was developed by Jeff Sagarin and Wayne Winston. 
Their solution was for some time in use by the Dallas Mavericks. Nothing was written about the details of this solution until April 30th, 2004, when Dan Rosenbaum published an article describing what he labeled the adjusted plus-minus ratings. These ratings, he wrote, do not reward players simply for being fortunate to be playing with teammates better than their opponents. Contributions for individual players are isolated statistically. I will not get into the mathematics of the method in this video, but using adjusted plus-minus ratings implies setting up a mathematical model and doing some serious number crunching. The basic idea, however, is as follows. Assume that we are observing a match with two teams each having 11 players. We would like to assign ratings to each of the players. If we observe a part of the match, we will see the 22 players move around as they normally do, and in the end some goals may have been scored. The ratings of the players should somehow reflect these goals. The adjusted plus-minus model says that if we add up the ratings of the players on one team and subtract the ratings of the players on the other team, the result should ideally be equal to the observed goal differential. In practice, due to the randomness of the game and the fact that goal differentials are integers, the ratings will not perfectly fit the observed goal differentials in all matches. Therefore, the model tries to find the best fit for the ratings by minimizing the errors. Adjusted plus-minus ratings were developed in the context of basketball. In football, however, some of their drawbacks are amplified. Let us look what happens if we calculate the adjusted plus-minus ratings for the 2016-2017 season of the English Premier League. It may not be too obvious immediately, as the eye is more drawn to the fact that this model suggests some unexpected names to be among the 10 best performing players in the Premier League season inspected. However, the list does show the main issue with adjusted plus-minus ratings. Players with few minutes played are just all over the place. While adjusted plus-minus ratings do not favor players that have the most playing time, it also fails at reasonably ranking the players that have few minutes played. The reasons for this, however, are by now fairly well understood. Besides the fact that having few observations of a player makes it essentially impossible to give the player a reasonable rating, the problem can also be framed in terms of properties of the mathematical model used to calculate adjusted plus-minus ratings. As far as I know, Joseph Sill was the first to propose a workaround for this problem, in his presentation at the MIT Sloan Sports Conference in 2010. He suggested to use a technique called Tikhonov regularization to reduce the influence of players with few minutes played. In a sense, while adjusted plus-minus ratings are calculated to best fit the ratings with the observed goal differences, regularized adjusted plus-minus ratings sacrifice some of this fit to ensure that no players are given extremely high or extremely low ratings. If using only the 2016-2017 season of the English Premier League, the regularized adjusted plus-minus ratings provide a much more reasonable ranking list than the adjusted plus-minus ratings. But perhaps not that much more reasonable than the basic pure plus-minus statistic that we had in the beginning. To properly use regularized adjusted plus-minus ratings for football, we need to add more data. Much more data. Adding many, many more seasons from many different leagues and competitions from around the world, this is another top 10 player list using regularized adjusted plus-minus ratings. Of course, using more data, we are not limited to only players appearing in the 2016-2017 season of the English Premier League and there are only two of them appearing on this list. So far we have seen ideas that are by now relatively well known, although perhaps not as much in football as in basketball and ice hockey. When using plus-minus ratings for football, there are some additional factors that must be handled, some of which have been handled in a few papers published in the academic literature. We have also presented a version of plus-minus ratings in other videos on this channel. So let's have a look at what modifications can be made to plus-minus rating models to adapt them to football. First, except for matches played on neutral ground, there is a home field advantage in football. This is relatively easy to include in the regularized adjusted plus-minus model. Second, players are sometimes sent off being given red cards. This is a bit trickier to take into account. In, for example, ice hockey, it is common to calculate plus-minus ratings for even-strength situations separately from power-play situations. 
Nevertheless, the model proposed on this channel seems to have found a way to model red cards that leads to improved player ratings. Third, it does seem that for football we need to include many seasons of data in order to get a reasonable rating list. This introduces a new challenge, as players normally do not have a constant playing strength throughout their careers. Our plus-minus model addresses this by allowing the rating of a player to depend on the age of the player. Based on this, we find that players tend to improve until their early 20s and then start to decline in their late 20s. Fourth, it does seem that for football we need to include many divisions and many leagues in order to get enough data for each player. This also introduces a new challenge as players tend to move between leagues and divisions, unlike what happens in some American sports with a different league structure. The regularized adjusted plus-minus rating does not deal properly with data being divided into different leagues, because the regularization assumes that all players with few minutes played should be associated to the same average rating. But the average rating of players in the English Premier League is naturally different from the average rating of players in the English League 2. Taking care of these four obstacles, the top 10 players for our modified regularized adjusted plus-minus rating looks like this, as taken from one of the earlier videos posted on this channel. Note that this is only showing the 10 highest rated players, and that at the time there were more than 17,000 players eligible for the list. So it is far from trivial to identify the best players merely based on information regarding who were on the pitch when the goals were scored. Now, while basic plus-minus ratings are very simple, the improved model just mentioned becomes rather complex when you start looking at the details. It should also be mentioned that there are many different ways of creating plus-minus models that consider the different aspects that are unique to football and to the data available. So how good are the resulting ratings and can they actually be used to evaluate players? I will answer this from the perspective of the improved model, where we have already eliminated some of the drawbacks of standard plus-minus ratings. It does seem that the model is fairly good at identifying some of the very best football players in the world. However, the ratings of players with few minutes played should not be trusted. Players probably need to appear in quite a few matches before we can reliably say anything about their playing strength. It is also valid to ask if it's still the case that players can get good ratings simply by playing for good teams and low ratings by simply playing for bad teams. I'm not yet willing to conclude that this is not the case. In one sense, it seems that the plus-minus ratings are perhaps not calculating how strong a player is, but rather how successful a player has been, in terms of achieving good results on the teams where he has played. Nevertheless, the best reason for enjoying the improved plus-minus ratings is perhaps that there are not many alternatives out there. At least not alternatives that are well justified and transparent. Now, if you enjoyed this introduction to plus-minus ratings and their application to football, please consider subscribing for more content. Also, I much appreciate any shares, likes or comments. Thank you for watching the video.